All right, so this is going to be the uh, the demo for the building sections. First thing I want to do is just talk about the line types that we're going to be using here first. Um, so I'm just going to edit these ones here to uh, to show the different line types that we're going to have. So the first one that we're going to be using is the normal. So this would be normal. These would be items in section. I'll just put section here. Okay, so those are items that the uh, saw would actually cut through if we were to uh, slice this building in half. Um, we're going to have our hidden lines, so we'll probably have some of those as well. There may be some hidden lines in there. Um, thick number one. So these are going to be um, building science items. Okay, so vapor barrier, moisture barrier, things like that. Um, <clears throat> next we're going to have our insulation, so insulation batting lines. So here's our uh, batting or hatching. Okay, those are going to be uh, dark gray lines. Our thin lines are going to be uh, detail lines. These would be the uh, elevation lines. So items in elevation that we would see after making the section cuts. And then we have thick number two. And uh, these ones here are going to be, um, let's see, that one, I think we've already, we've already got the normal, hidden, heavy, we've already got the heavy, so those are building signs. So we're probably not going to use thick number two. And uh, very thin detail lines, so these are going to be, um, detail lines and any other possibly hatching. Okay. So actually, you know what? I'm going to take this one out too. I'm going to just say, you know what, delete that. We're going to use the uh, the detail and hatching. We'll use very thin detail lines. Even though we have insulation batting lines, we'll probably use these very thin detail lines for that. All right, so that kind of gives you a little bit of an overview of which lines to uh, to be using. So we're going to start with the A detail. That's what we're going to make all of our lines is A detail to start with. We're going to use the same levels that we had in our elevations. So I'm going to make a copy of those. And I'll just copy it to a, an empty spot on my, um, my plan. And that's where we're going to actually start drawing. So I'll create some X lines using the uh, no plot layer just to kind of set up my levels, which will help guide me when I'm drawing my, my uh, drawings. So X line, horizontal. And I'll just put one at each of the uh, each of these lines here. They just help to uh, to guide me when when I'm drawing, so that I get the right levels. Okay, so back to the uh, to the detail lines. Now I'm going to start from the bottom up. I'm going to start from our footing and work our way up. So our footing. This is the top of the footing. I'm going to draw now our footing. I'll use a rectangle to draw. So let's just draw it at any point here. Now the size of our footing is going to be 16 inches wide by 6 inches deep. So 16 by 6. Now let me move this over a little bit here, just so it's not so tight to the uh, the drawing. There's our there's our footing. Okay, 16 by 6. And we're going to draw our wall on top of that. Now our wall is going to be a rectangle. Is going to be 8 inches wide by 5 inches high, or 60 inches, so 8 by 60. Now I'm going to center that over top of my footing. That's where it is. It's usually centered over top of the footing. Okay, so there's our footing. There's our foundation wall. The foundation wall is, is 5 feet high. You can see top of foundation wall. I've actually got it aligned to the top of where my, my um, foundation wall would be. Now we need to provide some lateral support in this wall which means that there's going to be a lot of um, pressure from the soil from the outside of the building that's going to be wanting to push this bottom of this wall in. So the way we provide that lateral support is by using a key. So you guys might remember this from the uh, foundation lecture. Um, the key is usually a 2 by 4, 3 and a half, 1 and a half inch block that's placed at the top of the footing, which then gets removed when the wall is poured, and that concrete then fills into that empty space. So we're going to place that just um, right at the top of the footing. I'm going to use my trim command. I'm going to trim out the inside. So there is now my key for my foundation wall. And it's inserted into the footing. So you can see that it's kind of like a puzzle piece. It kind of creates a link between the wall and the footing and makes sure that the bottom of that wall is not going to move when there's pressure from the outside. Now we need to uh, deal with the water. There's going to be a lot of water that's going to be... Um, uh, that's going to be uh, collecting against this foundation wall. Now we're going to have moisture barrier on the outside of the foundation wall, which is going to carry that water to the base of the foundation. Now this is all on undisturbed soil, but what can happen is that water can actually seep underneath the footing and get into the inside space. We don't want that happening. We don't any, want any water coming to this side of the inside of the wall. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to add weeping tile to the outside. Now weeping tile is just drawn with a circle that has a four inch diameter, or four inch radius, sorry. So not four inches diameter, four inch radius. And we're going to position that at the same level as the footing, but just on the outside of the footing. So this is going to be the exterior side on the left and the interior of the wall on the right. So that weeping tile will be on the outside. Okay, we'll label all these elements later. And it's going to be covered with gravel, so there'll be some gravel around this. Any water now that comes up against the foundation wall should um, follow its way down to the bottom of the foundation wall, enter into the weeping tile, and get carried away to the sewer system. And now it's, it's not our problem anymore. We don't have to deal with it in, in our foundation anymore. Now we need to draw our grade. We need to show where the grade line is on the outside. So I'm going to switch over to that grade line that we created. Remember we created a, um, a detail grade line? Right, that was that uh, color number 11. And that line starts at a point that's 8 inches down from the top of the foundation wall. So at 0, oops, 0, comma, negative 8. And it's going to um, come away on a bit of an angle. So just an arbitrary angle. And that would be our grade line. Okay, so that's 8 inches from the top of the foundation wall to the point where that grade sits. Now that's the minimum, minimum dimension. 8 inches. So I'll throw a quick dimension on there just so you can see. I'll delete the dimension afterwards, but that's 8 inches. Okay, so our foundation wall is 5 feet high, and the top 8 inches is exposed. It's out, sitting out of the ground. Now at the level where the foundation is going to be, or the, uh, the grade is going to be, that's going to be the, the approximate level of the slab that's inside of that, for the garage, the slab that sit, sits inside of the garage. So I'm going to draw another rectangle that's going to be, I'm just going to do it uh, three feet for now and three inches thick. So it's going to be three inches thick and I just made it an arbitrary length. I'm going to bring it down to approximately the same level as my grade. And I'm just going to extend this out. Now we'll have to draw the other side and we'll, uh, we'll figure out how to do that later, but I'm just going to extend it out. So there's my, there's my slab, my concrete floor slab in the garage. That's what the uh, cars would park on. Okay, now I'm going to move into my wall here, so we'll now to get started on the wall. Now, we know from a uh, previous lecture on walls, we know that the wall is made up of three plates. Those are the horizontal members of that wall. We're going to have the bottom plate, and we also have the top plate and the cap plate. So let's draw the bottom plate. Now, this is going to be a 2 by 6 wall, so the, the bottom plate is going to be 5.5 .5 inches wide and 1.5 inches tall. That's going to be, oops, I forgot to use the at symbol. I always forget that at 5.5 comma 1.5. Okay, so there's our bottom plate. Now the bottom plates are usually drawn with a rectangle, but they have a little X through them as well. There's a line from corner to corner. That represents a piece of lumber in section. Now because I'm going to be doing um, several different copies of this, I might as well save it as a block at this point. So I'll create a block and I'm going to call this block um, lumber 2 by 6. I'll call it a 2 by 6 lumber piece. I'll specify the base point as being just one point in that wall. Convert to block. Yeah, we're good. So now this should be a block. Okay, that's the bottom of the wall. Now the overall height of the wall is going to be 8 foot 1. So if I draw a line from the bottom of this wall in a straight line up 97 inches, that's 8 foot 1, that's going to be the top of my wall. Okay, so that just gives me a little guideline to use. Now I'll make a copy of this plate, and I'll copy it to the top of that wall. That would be the top plate, and I'll make another copy just underneath it. Sorry, that's the cap plate, that's the top plate. Okay, there's my wall, and I'm also going to draw another line, which connects. So now this, these lines would actually be elevation lines, because the, uh, this would be the um, ex example of the studs that we would see in elevation after we cut through the plates. So we're cutting through the plates, that's what the saw would touch. But these are going to be elevation lines. So let me just quickly review which lines are going to be our elevation lines. Those ones are going to be using A detail L I L L I N. So A detail L L I N. So let me find that line. There it is right there. So there's my lines in elevation. And that space is usually filled with a um, bat insulation. 
Now, the bad insulation is actually a line type on its own. Um, and I believe we actually have that. So we may end up using it because we have, yeah, a detail insulation. Let me just check my layer manager to make sure that the insulation is using the batting style, which it is. And so if I draw now a line in the very center, I'm going to draw it all the way down from the top plate to the bottom plate. You can see that it draws in my insulation, but it's obviously the wrong scale. So we need to change the scale of that. Now this requires a little bit of um, uh, fiddling around with the, uh, the overall scale of that line. And uh, where's my scale there? So line type scale. I'm going to try a variation. Let me just try 0.5 here and see if that helps. Now that did make it a bit better. Just move it out of the way, but it's still not quite there. You just got to play around with it till it fills up that wall. Okay, so 0.3 is really close. Let me see how close. Not quite there, but it's really close. Let me try 0.25. That's a bit too much, so 0.275. That actually looks close enough, maybe 0.28. Yeah, there we go. All right, so that was the um, the scale that we needed. So there's our bat insulation for a 2x6 wall. We would need 0.28 for that scale. Unfortunately, there's no other way other than, than to manually change the properties of that. I'll anchor that back into the left side, and so we use 0.28 for that uh, layer. Now that's going to differ depending on the thickness of the insulation, so we can't just make it a standard all the way across. We don't want to change our overall line type scale, otherwise our line types won't work properly, but um, we just need to modify the line type scale for that particular line only. So there's my wall. Not quite done yet though. We need to actually now draw uh, using the uh, section layer, which is A detail. We need to draw the uh, OSB sheathing on the outside. So OSB sheathing on the outside is going to start from the very bottom of the wall. It's going to be 3 eighths of an inch thick. So I'm going to make this at negative 0.375. And the height of it is going to be 97 inches. So let me check to make sure it went all the way to the top of the wall. So there we go. So we have our OSB sheathing on the outside of that wall, 3 eighths of an inch thick. From the underside of the plate to the top of the, the cap plate. So far, so good. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the joists. So the joists, um, we have a few different uh, joist types that we can choose from here. Let me just uh, open up. Now, you remember on the main floor plan, or one of the plans anyways, we talked about how um, the engineering engineer joists will be done by others. These are the uh, engineered joists. This is what they look like. Okay, so we have different variations. This is just one manufacturer of these type of um, joists. Uh, this is uh, Weyerhaeuser, I believe. There's other manufacturers, but they all look very similar. So they have a block at the top that's usually made of some dimensional lumber, usually 2x2 two two or maybe 2x3 two or 2x4. Two and, uh, and then they have a web in between them. So the top cord and the bottom cord of those joists are made of the dimensional lumber. Uh, some of them use a laminated lumber or laminated veneer lumber, so different types of lumber. And then we have the web that goes in between them. So we're actually going to redraw these and put them in our plan. We're going to use a block so that we can draw them all the same. I'm going to draw this variation here, something close to that. So inch and three quarters wide by an inch and three eighths high. The overall height that we're going to use is 11 and seven eighths. And we have a three eighths inch OSB web in there as well. So that's what we're going to use to draw. So let me just draw a rectangle. And I'm going to make this at 1 point, uh, was 1.75 wide by 1.375 high. Okay, so that would be the top. I'm going to copy that. And we add 11 and 7 eighths. So 11 and 7 eighths. Now I understand that's probably not going to be, it's going to be too, uh, too long. We also now need to just bump this up here to here. So now if we measure this, it should hopefully be 11 and 7 eighths. Let's check. Yeah, 11 and 7 eighths. Perfect. And then I'm going to place my uh, 3 eighths inch OSB between. So let me just draw Now it's going to be a little bit long. It's okay. I'll just move it into place here. Go from the center to the center. And I'll shrink this down. Okay, so I'm just doing a simple version, a simple representation of my joist. I'm going to save that now as a block and we'll call this, uh, I'm just going to call it um, joist 
I'm going to call it 12 inch because it's supposed to represent sort of a 12 inch joist. So joist to 12. Pick my base point. My base point will be the very center, maybe the bottom. Press OK. There we go. Now I can move this into place. And I'm going to place it right on top of the wall. There is no separation. There's nothing in between that. There's the, the um, joist itself sits right on top of the top plate of that wall. And you can see that we're really close to our top of floor um, top of main floor line. We still have one more component that we need to add in here though. We need to add in our floor sheathing. So I'm going to start from the very top corner of that joist. I'm going to draw another rectangle. I'll just make it three feet long for now. But I'm going to make it three quarters of an inch high. So 0.75 inches high. Okay, so we're a little off in terms of our levels, but that's okay. We can uh, we can adjust that later. We'll have to adjust it on the elevations as well. Oops. And we'll adjust the length of it. So there's my OSB sheeting, which sits on top of the joists. The joists sit right on top of the um, the walls. Now, depending on whether we're doing the transverse or the longitudinal section, will depend on whether or not we see more joists, or whether or not we see just a line like we have the green line drawn here. Um, between that, we're going to have one joist at the very end. They call it the header joist. We will have that, and it'll likely have a piece of lumber on the outside or a piece of wood that's placed on the outside, usually um, three eighths of an inch thick. So I'll make a copy. 0.375. Okay, they usually place that on the outside just to kind of so they don't have like a um, a couple ridges here, and it just makes it easier to fasten sheathing onto the outside of that as well. As a matter of fact, there may actually be sheathing perhaps already attached to the outside. So let's maybe draw that. Oops, come on. Maybe I'll just draw the sheathing on the outside here as well. Nope, we want to make sure we do a distance here, a distance of zero. Obviously used to zero for a camper distance before. There you go. So that would be the sheeting that's on the outside. And actually, now that I think about it, it would probably extend all the way up to yeah, to that level there. So they would place a piece of sheeting on the outside. They might even insulate um, the space in there with rigid insulation or bad insulation, something like that. Okay, so I'm going to imagine that we're doing the um, uh, I guess in this case here it would be the longitudinal section. So if we do, we're doing the longitudinal section, we would see a series of joists that would be a certain distance apart all the way across. So I'm going to um, to do that. Now the distance between our joists, we're going to use 16 inches. So I'm going to go 16, 32, 48, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, now that I have a few drawn, I can actually just use one as use them as a reference and copy them all the way across. You get the idea. We're going to do that all the way across. This would be an example of perhaps the transverse section, or sorry, the longitudinal section. Uh, transverse would just have these lines going all the way across, top and bottom, because you would be seeing the uh, elevation, yeah, and you'd be seeing it in that direction. You might actually even see another line which would represent the top of the top chord, and a line which would re represent the top of the bottom chord. You might see that instead as well. So. Um, all right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take uh, we're going to do a, another wall on top of the subfloor. So there's our three quarter inch subfloor. There will be a wall on top of that. And you notice the line I'm using for orienting all the walls. This line here. So the outside of the foundation wall. That is our alignment point. That's what we dimension to. So when we have our, our uh, the width of our building at 21 feet, it's 21 feet from this line to the other side of the foundation wall on the other side. 21 feet. 21 feet does not include the OSB subfloor or the OSB sheeting on the outside. It's the alignment point of that 2x6 wall. Now I'm going to have a very similar configuration on the upper floor, so I'm just going to copy. I might as well, instead of redrawing everything, I'm just going to copy from the bottom level, the garage level, up to the main floor level. Now the only difference here is that these walls, for some reason didn't copy my top plates there, these walls are actually... Um, Higher, they're they're uh, nine foot one as opposed to eight foot one. So our garage floor walls were eight foot one. These walls are nine foot one, which means we need to stretch this wall up twelve inches. 
And we're a little off in terms of our lines, and the reason for that is that we, um, we assumed 12 inches for the total thickness of the floor, from the top of the subfloor to the underside of the joist. We assumed 12 inches, and we actually have 12 and 5 eighths of an inch. So we're 5 eighths of an inch off. So we might have to fix that. Although I'm inclined to kind of leave it because I hate putting odd dimensions in there. I might just leave it, maybe go 20 foot, 23 foot 2 and a half or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. All right, so there's our garage walls. There's our main floor walls. And now we're going to do our roof on top of that. So this is very similar to what we drew when we did our, um, our elevation. So you're going to have your bottom cord of your truss. Now we, we do have a, um, I guess depend, depending on which way we're looking at it, we do have... Uh, the bottom cord of the truss, which if we do our transverse section, is going to be on the slight angle because we're using scissor trusses. So I might actually, um, I'm just going to draw an arbitrary angle here for now just to remind us to, uh, to look at that, but it's going to be based on the outside angle first. The one thing we do know is we have a six inch heel. So I'm going to draw six inches. Okay, that's going to be the uh, top of the top cord of my truss. And we know that the slope of the um, roof is going to be 612. So that means for every 12 inches over, so I'm going to go add 12, we go 6 inches up, 12 comma 6. So that should be the slope of my roof on the outside. Now I can extend that if I want. Maybe I'll do a lengthen command here. Let's do um, total and let's make it, uh, I don't know, let's make it 18 feet for now. Okay, I just wanted to extend it up so you can see we're eventually going to connect it with the other side and it'll come down in terms of its height, but we'll draw it up for now. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a line out. Now our overhangs are 16 inches, so we're going to draw a line 16 inches out and we'll come up and then we'll actually connect the two just so that we can... Uh, Let me just draw a line here. Okay, so these should actually be camfered now. Okay, so that's the point on the outside of our um, eaves, or the overhang of the eaves. That's 16 inches out. We can delete our line here. We can delete our line here. So that's going to be the top of the uh, top cord. I'm going to add in now a rectangle. It's going to be at, now this is a 2x6 wall, so actually I could use my stud if I wanted to. The stud that, or the, uh, yeah, let me do our, our uh, lumber in section here, a 2x6 lumber. 2x6 lumber, I'm going to specify a rotation angle of 90 degrees. Let's place it in our drawing and let's move it so that it connects to the upper corner there. This is our subfascia. Now what we can do is we can offset for the thickness of the uh, truss members. So our top cord is 3.5 inches. It's using a 2x4, so it's 3.5 inches thick. And we can see the connection that we have. There are actually this would be this will connect in like so, and this will camfer in like that. Okay, so there's a little bit of difference there, but we have sheathing on top as well, which is going to um, we're going to offset this line three eighths of an inch for the sheathing. Okay, and then I might as well let's just draw a line here and camfer it. Oops, wrong way. There we go. So it might look something like that. Okay, last thing we're going to draw is we're going to draw our soffit. Oh, I didn't draw this long enough. Sorry. There we go. We're going to draw our soffit, and our soffit is going to be 3 eighths of an inch. And in this situation, our soffit actually follows the line of the underside. So that was. 0.75, let's try that again, 0.375. Our soffit follows the line of the underside of the, um, the top cord of that truss. So now I'll just fix these lines up so it would connect in here and it would be trimmed at that point there. We can get rid of this. Actually, we'll leave part of it in for now. Our soffit follows the underside of the top cord of that truss and it's going to be vented. It's going to be vented through here. Um, we have a three eighths of, or sorry, three and a half inches for the, um, uh, the thickness of the bottom cord. Now the bottom cord is going to be one half of the slope of the top cord. So if we have a 612 slope 
on the top chord, we're going to have a 312 slope for the bottom chord. So let's just uh, redraw this line here, and we're going to make that slope at 12, comma 3. So that should be the slope of the scissor trusses. Let's see if we can extend that. There we go. That's the bottom chord. And it's going to be an offset of three and a half, so this, there's a two by four. That's what they use for the bottom chord of that truss. Okay, now typically they wouldn't go together with such a small amount of bearing like that. Typically there would be a little bit more bearing and probably to the tune of another three and a half inches. So I'm going to offset this three and a half inches and I'm going to do a bunch of camfering to sort of clean this up. So it might look something, whoops, I probably didn't want to delete that line. Yeah, I want to trim this one. Alright, so it looks something like that. That's how the connection would look at that point. And we don't really need this line anymore, but we might turn it into something else. I'm going to drop this down one inch, and I'm going to actually make this line, um, <clears throat> I'm going to make it our uh, insulation stop. Oops, okay, this is going to be our insulation stop. Now we have um, loose fill insulation, or might even have bat insulation that's in this attic space or in this truss space, and we don't want to be clogging up. You can imagine if it if it got into this soffit area space here that it would actually clog that up, and it would create a, a situation where we wouldn't be getting any ventilation into our attic space. And this is really where we ventilate our attics from is actually underneath the soffit. So you can imagine no water would get underneath there, but we might have some vapor, some moisture vapor that would actually um, get up into that attic space. So insulation stops prevent the insulation from clogging up that space and provide a little bit of uh, airflow. And we need about an inch, usually a minimum of an inch there. The length of it, though, would only need to be about six inches long. So I'm just going to shorten that to six inches. And we'll uh, do a little bit more on the roof in, in a minute. So now we have our insulation stop drawn in location here. We've got our top cord and we have our, our um, bottom cord as well. Now those all, all those elements are going to be in elevation. The only thing that's going to be in section is the OSB and the soffit, right, and the, uh, the fascia. So these are all going to be elevation lines. So the ones we used for those were the light lines. The, um, <clears throat> this is a building science related item. I just forgot to... Uh, go. This is a building science related item, so I can't remember which layer we were using there. Building science is going to be a detail H L I N for heavy lines. So because we want to highlight the fact that that's there, we will use the A detail H line. So we'll make that a heavier line so it stands out a little bit. And that also is an item in section. And I'm going to copy this because we would see two parts of that soffit in section. We're going to copy that section line up. So those are the line types that we should have. Now, now that you have one side drawn, you can basically copy it and mirror it to the other side. So really easy, just take this, these components. We don't need a, don't need everything. That slab doesn't have to be copied. We'll copy a few of the joists, things like that. We might copy these lines. Actually, no, those lines we can continue through once we get it drawn. So we'll copy a few of those. Uh, we'll copy all of the uh, the roof components. And actually, I'm just going to mirror it. And if I've done it properly. If I choose my mirror line as the intersection line right there, don't erase the other objects, so now we have two sets of objects. Now if I do my uh, dimension, it's probably going to be a little bit off because of the, uh, the height of our walls, but I should have 21 feet. So I got 20 foot 11 and a half, which means I need to move one of these over 11 and a half inches. Or sorry, half inch, just one half inch to get it to... Uh, so I'm going to move it over. 0 0.5, let's double check our dimension now, we have 21 feet. So 21 feet from the edge of one foundation wall to the edge of the other side, edge of the foundation wall. And now I can, I can finish off all the components. There's my floor slab. I can, uh, let's just delete this line, don't need that line in there. 
to delete the sheathing. I'll extend the sheathing out. Over to the other side, and we'll do some trim work extensions here. Now that would only be, I think we're doing the transverse section here, so I'm just going to delete all those. Those would only be for the longitudinal section. We still have our um, joists on the very end though. There are, we call it a rim joist. The rim joist goes all around the perimeter of the building. So that would be our rim joist, and then we would see the uh, other joists that are in section here. Now the other thing that we're going to have here, just sort of, uh, again, somewhat of a building science related item, is we're going to have drywall on the inside of this garage. If it's insulated, it should be drywalled. And uh, we're also going to have insulation on the underside of this joist space. So the underside of that joist space is going to be using a um, rigid insulation. And the rigid insulation is going to be two inches thick. So I'm going to draw this at, uh, let's just do three feet for now, comma, negative two. So that would be our rigid insulation, and that's going to go all along the underside of those joists, from one end of the floor to the other. So this is going to provide our insulation in this space here. Um, insulation from the unfinished garage, because the garage, when you open up that big door, is going to get quite cold. And so we want to insulate the floor from getting too, uh, too cold there. And we're also going to put some drywall underneath that. So the drywall, they usually install the ceiling drywall first. So let's go 36 comma negative 0 0.5. All drywall is half an inch thick. So there's my rectangle that's half an inch thick, and I'm just going to bring it to the other side. All drywall, half an inch thick. So they do the ceiling first, and then they do the walls next. So this is going to be at 0 0.5 comma, and this one here would be, um, I don't know, let's go ni negative 96 for now. And we'll just bring it down or adjust it at the bottom. Now the drywall usually goes within about a half an inch of the bottom, so I'll just extend this up half an inch. It doesn't actually go right to the ground, it only goes about, uh, about that far. And I might as well copy this now to the other side. I can mirror it. Now that I have my mirror lines drawn, I can actually just mirror that. Just pick a couple lines, don't erase the other objects, and I should have my drywall almost drawn on the other side. Alright, so that's what it looks like for the drywall connection. Rigid insulation, it's a bit tricky to draw. Um, I'm going to use the hatching lines, so A detail. There's here, it's going to be thin lines, I believe, so that's going to be hatching or light lines. I think that's what it was, light lines. The rigid insulation, you kind of just got to draw series of lines like this. I'm just going to copy them. This almost looks like teeth. This is what rigid insulation looks like. So you get the idea. That's kind of what we need there. We're also going to put some insulation, the same line type as we have here. We're going to put some of those in between the joists. So I'm going to just draw a line from top to bottom. I'm going to make it the same thickness as these walls. So I remember the scale that I used was 0 0.28. And I'll just move it so that it sits inside of that space. Okay. So there we show some insulation. And there that would actually go all the way to the bottom. And all the way to the top, under underside of the uh so we can see you can see that we have we have a solid insulation insulating that uh floor space and we're also going to have insulation running across the bottom of the floor joist just above the rigid insulation. So again I'm going to draw a line here and I'm going to use the same thickness draw it all the way across .28 and I'll line this up so that it sits just on top of that rigid insulation.
Let me make a copy of this stuff here. Okay, so that's kind of what, would it, what it would look like. That's that uh, floor joist space. Now this space in here is actually heated space, so they're going to have heat ducts running through here, so it'll be warmer space, but if this is the, uh, you know, it keeps that floor nice and warm so you don't get the temperature changes between the, um, the un in unfinished or the, the cold garage and the warm heating space. Now same idea for this uh, roof here. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit here. Let me just uh, use my camphor command. Let me clean up some of the roof components, so the, the um, OSB sheathing. Might as well clean up the joists or the uh, trusses. Somewhat like that. We're not finished with those trusses yet. We still need to do a little bit of work in drawing them. So I'll make that the current layer. We want to draw a truss design. Now I've got some truss designs on D2L for you so that you can see actually what, the, uh, what they look like. So here's one. This is kind of what a, a regular, they call this a, uh, I believe it's a Fink truss. Um, but this is kind of what the truss looks like. So here's the different components. You can see there's the heel, there's the overhang. Uh, we have the top cord, right? So you see that's labeled. We have the bottom cord. These are called webs. And there's the slope. I have another version here which shows, in D2L, which shows a scissor truss. And that's kind of what we're drawing. So we can take a look at it and use it as a reference for drawing our trusses. So this is a scissor truss. Let me zoom in a bit here. Okay, so you see our scissor truss. The top cord is one slope. The bottom cord is about half of that slope. We have what's called the king post here. And we have a diagonal and we have another vertical post. They actually call this the uh, jack post or the queen post. Um, queen or, I can't remember Queen or Jack, but the King is the main one, joins the top cord to the bottom cord, right in the very center, and then you have your diagonals and you have other posts as well. So we're going to draw something very similar to this. Really easy to draw. I'm going to start off with drawing lines between the top and the bottom, just like so. Seems we're a bit off with this truss here though. Fix that real quick. Try that again. Do my camphor. I think the uh, the roof was just a little bit off for some reason. Let me try my line here now. That works better. All right, I'm going to offset half of three and a half inches, so 1.75 to both sides, so that it's centered. Delete the middle line. Okay, and then I'm going to actually um, do a bunch of trimming here. Clean it up a little bit. Okay, you don't need to show the joints or anything like that. You just, just show it like, like that so you can see kind of what it looks like. I'm going to draw a diagonal now. So I'll draw a line from here, maybe to, um, to the midpoint of that. Now that's probably a little bit too much. Let's just draw an arbitrary amount. Again, we're just showing kind of what it looks like. We don't have to get it exact. Okay? Just a general idea. Use this as a trim point, this and this. Delete that line. Okay, and now I'm going to draw another line straight down. Offset it 1.75 to both sides. Delete the center line. Do some more trimming. Clean it up. Okay, now that I have that drawn, I'm going to copy these and mirror image them. And trim the other side. So this would be just a real quick example. Looks like the angle was a bit off. Hold on. You guys will do a better job, right? Okay, real quick example of a uh, scissor truss, just so that we can see how that looks. Now this line here, which represents the line of the drywall, would actually be right underneath that top cord. 
Okay, so we're gonna we're actually sectioning through that. So let me just move that to draw order, send it to the back so we can see where'd that green line go? There it is. Okay. Make that the current layer. This would be the uh, the drywall. We're actually sectioning through the drywall, right? So we're going to be using our section line for that. We're going to offset the thickness of the drywall half an inch. Use my camphor command. Clean it up. Use my trim command. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing with my drywall here. So I'm going to go up half an inch, approximately to there. Uh, this one here, I'm going to just use 96 for now, comma, or sorry, 0 0.5 half inch drywall, 96 inches high. And I'll just adjust the top here. I might have to explode it here to trim it. Let me just try trimming it first. There we go. And now I can actually mirror image that as well. Let's see if it worked. Yep. Good. So there's the uh, the massing for the um, for the drawing. Now one of the things that you're going to do as well is you're going to be hatching all around this building. So what you might want to do is actually choose a layer that's the, um, the hidden line layer and actually create a little bit of a location, I'd say about uh, eight inches. Um, you're going to create a perimeter for your hatching. So this your hatching will be able to, um, to to fit inside of here. So you're going to leave these lines in place, whoops, and you're going to use them as guidelines for your for your hatching. Okay, so you're going to do some hatching in here. We're also going to do some hatching in here. So let me show you some of the uh, the hatch patterns that we're going to use here. So I'm going to switch over to the hatch layer. So it would be the uh, A wall pattern hatching layer, or we could use the um, uh, where is it? The A detail light line. I believe that's the one. Or is it? Yeah, I think that's the one. Let's double check. Detail hatching, A detail T line. So those are actually the very thin lines. Good thing I checked. So the blue layer. I'm going to choose my hatch. Now this, we're going to use the uh, Escher Earth or the Earth symbol for this one. So the hatch pattern that we're going to be using we're just outside of the ground, where is it here? Is Earth. Oh, that scale's not quite right. Let's try a different scale. Still too much. Let's try 10. Let's try an angle here. Come on. 45. Yeah, that's a bit better. I think maybe 15. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, and then we're going to use a gravel hatch pattern around the weeping tile. And that's probably a bit too much. Let's try five. That's a bit better. Let's try three. Yeah, that's probably about right. Okay, these are the wrong layers. I thought I selected the layer, but I must have lost it. And same idea on the inside of the foundation wall. You're going to give basically give context. So what we're doing is we're giving a whole bunch of context here. These drawings. So we're showing where the um, the gravel would be, showing where the undisturbed earth is going to be, and I'm using about six or eight inches.
all the way around. Okay, it doesn't have to be exact, but just approximately. Just want to get the idea here. There's my earth again. There you go. But you can do that on both sides. Okay, and match properties. Let's do match properties to that one. There we go. Okay, so it shows undisturbed earth all the way around, gravel around the weeping tile, undisturbed earth against the, well not undisturbed, but compacted earth or, or um, around there. Actually this one here, made a mistake, this should be granular fill underneath the slab. Let me try that one again. Should have about six inches of granular fill underneath that slab. Which would be gravel. Six inches of gravel. And we did, we did a hatch pattern three there, that's right. Alright, so now let's um just while we have a little bit of time left here, I'm just gonna show you how to uh, draw a window in section, a door in section, as well as um you know how to draw walls now. Interior walls are going to be two by four walls, so that instead of using two by six, you're going to use two by four. And they are not insulated. Okay, interior walls are not insulated. Uh, we're going to need to draw some insulation in the ceiling here as well. So we'll draw some insulation line. Use this line as the uh, current line. We'll draw along the uh, lines like this. Just change the scale. Now this needs to be 12 inches thick. So if 6 inches was 0.28, let's try 0.56. Now that should be, give us 12 inch. And we're just going to move it until it fits. You get the idea. Something like that. Okay. And so all the whole space needs to be insulated. And then we're going to be showing um, vapor barrier in between the, uh, the drywall and the stud and moisture barrier on the outside of the OSB sheathing. Don't need to show flooring materials, although you would have flooring materials above that OSB subfloor there. Uh, so let's look at now drawing a wall, or sorry, not a wall, a, um, a door. Let's look at drawing a door now. All right, so I'm going to use my detail line to start with. Now all doors, we start with the slab first. So just like we drew our slabs in elevation, we're going to do a slab that's going to be, let's say, 3 feet wide, so 36 by 80. 80 inches is the height of all door slabs. Now, I actually have some interior door samples if you wanted to take a look at some of the examples of the doors that you could draw. So here's an example in D2L of all the interior doors, what they kind of look like. Um, just keep it simple, but you can see also the height of the doors. Now, the width is going to be based on your floor plan, so take a look at what width you used for those floor plans and then use the width of the door and then just to do do the height at six foot eight that's going to be the height of our doors six foot eight that's 80 inches once we have that we're going to now offset now be careful of this one we're not going to offset an inch and a half that would be the frame but the frame is covered by some casing and it's three inches we're going to use three inches for the casing there is no casing at the bottom so there's a very simple version of an exterior door or an interior door sorry so anywhere I have a door now, I can just place it in my plans. Now, the location where I'm going to be using that, I will have to orient this drawing underneath the plan view, or underneath the views for that. So the transverse section, if I have a line cutting through this part of the plan, I'm going to see that door. Therefore, I'm going to be placing that door in elevation. Come on. I'll just place it there for now and I'll move it. And I'll be lining it up. So I'll do my X line vertical, place it in the center of the door. Let's do another X line just to line these drawings up.
Okay, now those are lined up, and we need to get that door centered in that space. There. Okay, so there would be my door, and, and you know, you can put as much detail on as you want. But we do need to have them located. So that's the door that we would see after sectioning through in that, in that view. Alright, so let's do a door in section and a window in section. Alright, so a door in section is uh, basically going to be the same idea. It's going to be 80 inches high, but now you're going to use the thickness of the wall, including the drywall and the OSB. So the OSB is 3 eighths of an inch, drywall is half an inch, and the wall is going to be 5 and a half if you're using an exterior wall, four, or 3 and a half if you're using an interior wall. So you're going to make your uh, rectangle, um, in this case 5 and a half plus half inch is 6, plus 3 eighths is 6 and 3 eighths, so 6.375. And the height of it is going to be 80 inches. Okay, so this is going to be a door in section, so you're going to be seeing the side of it in section. So there's your uh, 80 inch door. Now the other thing we can um, we can do here is we can show the frame at the top. Now the frame at the top is going to be an inch and a half high, so we'll go six and three seven six point three seven five comma one point five. So that's an inch and a half high frame, and we're going to be showing the door slab that we're actually sectioning through it. So the door slab is inch and a half thick and eighty inches high. So there's our door slab. Now, we, if we want, we can actually move it in just a tiny little bit. Let's move it in half an inch. Because normally, the, uh, you know, when it's separated a little bit, you don't have to. But uh, um, that would be our door slab in section. There would be the top frame in section. And these would then become elevation lines. So we're going to change that to our elevation lines, which is the M line. The frame, which we'll bring forward, just so we can see it in the front. The frame is in section, and the slab is in section. And we would also potentially have a little bit of a threshold here as well. So let me bump this up an inch and a half, or sorry, yeah, an inch and a half, maybe an inch. So let's go back down. And our, we would have a frame here, which would be um, 6 and 6.375 and one inch high. Okay, that would be sort of like the bottom or the threshold of the door, and you'd be sectioning through that as well. So there's a door in section, very easy to draw. The only thing missing is we would need to draw um, a hatch pattern in here. So we're going to use just probably an ANSI um, hatch pattern. Let me just bring up the hatch here. Let's choose the uh, diagonal line hatch pattern. This one right here, ANSI 31. We'll click in there. We'll change the uh, angle to zero. And that looks good. So that's showing our door slab as we're cutting through it. Don't worry about the handles, anything like that. Just 